All right, we are up to this crazy guy named Kramer. And I don't know how mathematicians stumbled on some of the stuff they did, but it's just amazing to me. All right, so Kramer's rule is a method. Notice how it doesn't say the only method? So the grand finale of uh, trimester A gives you multiple methods to solve things like this and things like this. I'll talk more about that later. But notice we have X, Y, and Z. That may be the first time you've seen that. But you're, you're very accustomed to how to solve these. And um, talk about that in a, in a minute. But it's a method of using determinants. See, Kramer's, Kramer's trying to make your life easier, not harder. The problem is his technique on these problems, I think, makes your life a little bit harder. You guys are pretty dang good at solving these. You should be by now without Kramer. But Kramer comes in very handy for these. So we're going to uh, demonstrate how Kramer works for this one and then apply it to this one so it all makes sense. So here we go. As you can see, it says x, I'm going to highlight this, x is equal to the determinant of dx over d. So what in the world is dx and d? We'll talk about that in a minute. y is equal to the determinant of y over the matrix defined by d. We'll talk more about that later, but I'm going to throw this in. Z equals, what do you think? The determinant of DZ over D. All right, so what in the world are these parts? Let's go ahead and keep the color codedness consistent just to make it pretty. There we go. Okay, well, first of all, in yesterday's lessons, we learned how to find the determinant of two by twos. But we also learned how to find the determinant of three by threes. These are easy. These are pretty challenging. So um, let's just keep rolling. <clears throat> so it says in kind of a formula sort of a way that if you have this, which by the way, there is no Z, but you have A1, B1. See that? A1, B1. And then A2, B2 a2, b2, all that means is take the coefficient of x, take the coefficient of y, put it in the top, coefficient of x, coefficient of y in the bottom, put it in the bottom. And let's stop right there. So we know that d, based on that uh, explanation, is 3, 4, and 5, 3. All right. Well, what's dx? Well, that's the clue, and I want you to notice C1 and C2, these are called your constants. And that's just your numbers right here, okay? And what dx is telling you to do is to replace, replace your a's, in other words, your coefficient of x, get replaced with your constants. So, okay, well, let's just do it rather than yapping our yapper. So dx means replace the 5 and the 3 with the negative 2 and the 4. And don't mess with the y's. So what do you suppose you do to find dy? Well, you replace the y column, the coefficients, with your constants, negative 2, 4. And then the x's stay the same. So now we're ready to use the formula right here. We don't need the pink one because we don't have z. x is the determinant of dx divided by the determinant of d. Well, here we go. We obviously need to figure out the determinant of d, which is right here. So that's going to be 9 minus 20. So I'm multiplying that way. And I get negative 11. Let's figure out dx. That would be negative 6 minus 16, negative 22. What's dy? Well, that'd be 12 minus negative 10, which is 22. Now, what do these numbers help me with? Well, look at this formula. x is, says dx, we just figured it out, it's negative 22 over d, 
which is negative 11, so it gives me 2. What does y equal? Well, that gives me dy, the determinant of dy, over d. Well, we figured it out. It's 22 over negative 11, which is negative 2. So we just used Kramer's rule to solve this system of equations. Now, those of you who are like, wait a minute, 3x plus 4y equals negative 2. 5x plus 3y equals 4. And you would have said, hey, I'm going to multiply that by negative 5 and this by 3. Let's watch what happens here. I'd get negative 15x minus 20y equals 10. Am I still on the page? Yeah. 15x plus 9y equals 12. Add those together. These cancel. I get negative 11y equals 22. y equals 22 over negative 11. Look at it. 22 over negative 11. 22 over negative 11. Kramer figured this out. It's amazing. So this equals negative 2. Now I'm not going to bore you to death, but to find x, you would plug this in either here or here and find x. Okay? You've been there, done that. I want to spend some time here, the last problem, and this is a beaut, okay? So this thing is very challenging. You don't have this little handy-dandy elimination or substitution method in your back pocket. So that's where, this is where Kramer's rule really starts helping. However, you need to figure out what d is, you need to figure out what dx is, you need to figure out what dy is, we need to figure out what dz is. Well, d just comes, I don't even know if I have enough space, from taking off all of these coefficients. And I'm going to put a 0x right there, and there's a 1 there. And so that means I ignore the constants, and I take off all those coefficients. 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, negative 2. And now we have a 3 by 3 that we need to figure out the determinant of. So, there's no easy way of going about it. We pull that out. Make our line, make our line. We see this, these four right here. 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Minus, now I'm going to pull that guy out. First time that's happened. And make my line, make my line. So I got 0, 2, 2, negative 2. 0, 2, 2 negative 2, and then plus, pull that last one out, and a line and a line would leave me with 0, 1, 2, 3, that's easy to remember, 0, 1, 2, 3, and now we get to work. This would be 1 times, let's do it in our head, negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8, this would be plus, and I get 0 minus 4 is negative 4, and then I get plus 1, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So it would be negative 8 plus another negative 8 is negative 16 plus negative 2 is negative 18. There's my D. All right. Now I'm going to take DX and maybe move it up here just for some space. What does the little X mean? It means take all of these constants and replace my X column with those constants. So that would be negative 4, 4, 2. Negative 2, 1, 3. Very easy to make a mistake. 1, 2, negative 2. And now I'm going to try to squeeze this in now. Take the upper left out. Make my line my line. I'm going to take these 4, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, minus. There's that negative 2. And it caused me problems. Line down, line across, 4, 2, 2, negative 2. 4, 2, 2, negative 2. Plus, take the 1 out. A line and a line. Look at the square left. That'd be 4, 1, 2, 3. And now we get after it. And so we got negative 4 times. Let's do some mental work. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. That'd be plus 2. It would be negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12, plus 1, that would be 12, minus 2 is 10. 32 minus 24 plus 10. 
Now this is 8. 8 plus 10 is 18. So I know dx equals 18. Okay? Now, if we just keep moving, dy, what does that mean? Take my constants, replace my y coefficients with my constants, and then my x's and my z's stay the same. So I'm going to try to do this right here. And so my x's stay the same. My y's get replaced with the constants, negative 4, 4, 2. And then my z's, 1, 2, negative 2. And there it is. And so I would, I'm going to try it over here. I'm going to peel the upper left-hand one out, make my box. 4, 2, 2, negative 2. 4, 2, 2, negative 2. Always a minus. There's a negative 4 there, though. Careful of that. Make my line, make my line. 0, 2, 2, negative 2. Plus, take my 1 out. Line, line, 0, 4, 2, 2. All right. Do some math. 1 times negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. Uh, that's plus 4. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Plus 1. 0 minus 8 is negative 8. So we get negative 12 plus negative 16 is negative 28. Plus negative 8 is negative 36. Now I'm going to show you guys a shortcut. Okay? Because... Don't we know, don't we know from these little formulas that x equals dx over d? So x equals dx over d is simply saying 18 over negative 18, which equals negative 1. What would y be? Well, y is dy over d. Well, we found dy is negative 36, d is negative 18, so we got 2. Well, if we know what x is, and we know what y is, do we really have to figure this out using Kramer's rule? No. We can pick any one of these equations. I'm just going to pick the top one, because it's got my x's, my y's, my z's, and everything. And I'm just going to write it down, x minus 2y plus z equals negative 4. What is x? Negative 1 minus 2. What is y? 2 plus z equals negative 4. Basic algebra 101. So this is negative 5 if I added those together. So I'm going to add 5, add 5, and I get z is 1. I don't know if you've seen this before, but so you always write your answer in x, y, z form, just like a regular x, y, but now you got the z. So we said x is negative 1, y is 2, z is 1. Wow, one math problem. Please show that to your younger kids, your, I mean your younger brothers and sisters. Uh, we love them when they're intimidated when they come up to high school math. But it's really not that hard, is it? But if you show your younger brothers and sisters this, oh, they'll look up to you big time. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? All right, you guys have a great day.